As a biophotonic engineer, I create new microscopes. I put together puzzle pieces that are lasers, lenses, and photo detectors in imaging systems that can visualize cancer cells. Visual sensory information can guide the surgical excision of cancer, but there is a healthcare need to make the technology faster, cheaper, and more precise. The way we do it today, the gold standard, is slow and difficult. So, if we could guide the blades of surgeons with real-time cellular vision, we could dramatically improve cancer care for three million Americans diagnosed each year. Towards that end, we created a system, a microscope system, and that system can actually, in whole tissue, provide cellular images, which is much more rapid than the gold standard. So, in the hands of uh, my colleagues that had had special training to interpret this new contrast, but there was a problem spreading this technology to the rest of the medical community. This is the advance that happened, and the images were black and white, where the nuclei popped out like very bright needles in a dark haystack. And this made the tumors jump out, and they were detectable. But there was a problem spreading this technology to the rest of the medical community. The rest of the medical community did not have the training. They didn't understand the mechanism of contrast, and they didn't know what they were looking at. In the five-minute retraining session, the, the technology lost the interest of the medical community, and the, and the progress was stopped. So it really all comes down to the mechanism of contrast. For the molecular biologists in the room, uh, the acridine orange molecule intercalates between the DNA base pairs, staining nuclei and labeling cells. But the take-home message is just the images of cells. In the epidermis, the top layer of skin that protects you, the cells are patterned like a nice cobblestone road, okay? They're all the same shape and size, and they're regularly spaced, whereas in the eccrine gland that provides sweat, the cells are shaped in this kind of coiling snake-like shape. The sebaceous gland are these balls of sebum, the oil that causes pimples, and here, is a tumor, and the tumor kind of looks like a porcupine because the nuclei are densely packed and various pointy shapes. So after that training session, I will award all of you honorary degrees in pathology because the cancer cell type should stick out to you like a sore thumb. And it actually did in the hands of our medical doctors that were trained to interpret the contrast, but there was a problem spreading to the rest of the medical community who hadn't been trained in this to interpret this contrast and uh, didn't know what they were looking at. So, we wanted to figure out a way to re-present uh, this information in their visual language, right? Uh, so that it would feel comfortable immediately. The medical community is trained to read these color images, where the colors come from the physical stains that are used to prepare the microscope slides. The nice purple color you see comes from the hematoxylin stain. It stains the nuclei, and it's made from the logwood tree that's cut down in the rainforests. And uh, the eosin counter stain stains everything else besides the nuclei pink. The new technology was black and white, but what if we could present this in a way that uh, you know, mimicked those colorful dyes? So I took a step back, and we reorganized the technology to mimic closely the two functions of the gold standard. In addition to the contrast for the nuclei, we added a second microscope imaging mode that provided counter-contrast. So it was counter -con contrast for the nuclei, counter-contrast, Con contrast, counter contrast, and then we colored these two images pink and purple and put them together and they looked like this. And that turned some heads because it was in the visual language that everybody knew how to understand. So, translational research is translating a new scientific technology from the laboratory bench to the patient bedside. Translational research happens rapidly when the new technology meets a healthcare need without the uncomfortable need for retraining of personnel. In this case, the color code represented a 
conditioned stimulus in the brains of the audience, and recognizing that conditioned stimulus and exploiting it circumvented the need for retraining. So technology won't change the world with just one inventor; it needs to spread. New technology spreads rapidly when the wheel isn't completely reinvented, but rather tweaked to be recognizable. Right? So, creating something that's recognizable is, is is an important part of technological development. And if we can do this with new technologies, and the new technology invention is only step one, the second subtle step is engineering an embodiment that will spread. Thank you.